Selamat siang. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera Good bagi. afternoon. Peace be upon us. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Science and Policy Dialogue. On the first series, this dialogue is part of the Global Comparative Study on Red Plus, or what we usually say GS, G GCS Red Plus. I am Sandy Noviansa, Research con con Consultant in Climate Change, Energy, and Low Carbon Development Team, or CCE Team, from C4 ICRAF, that will lead this event for the next two hours. The Science and Policy Dialogue Series was developed to support uh, participative research in order to have maximum utilization of research outcome by more parties, and to harmonize research with domestic context and specific relevant issue. This dialogue is going to start off with presentation sessions and followed by plenary discussion that will require your active participation. Uh, Please allow me to welcome all of the speakers who are here with us. Dr. Pam Tutui, team leader of climate change, energy, and low carbon development, or what we call CCE from C4 and ICRAF. Professor Daniel Muriarso, principal scientist from C4 ICRAF. And let me let me see, um, Dr. Sony Mumbunan, research from the Research Center for Climate Change, University of Indonesia. Bimo Dwi Satrio, senior research officer from C4 ICRAF. And I also see Ibu Dr. Dr. Nur Higiawati Rahayu, STMSC, or who we usually call Yuke, director of forestry and Water Resources Conservation from National Development Planning Agency. And I would like also to extend the highest appreciation to all of the participants who are willing to join us today in this discussion and becomes part of the Project Advisory Group or PAG. And I would like to inform you that in this event, we provide English-Indonesian interpretation features and you can access it on the bottom right of your screen. And as we all know, this event is being recorded. So please uh, mute your microphone during the presentation session to ensure the smooth running of the presentation session to avoid any voice nuisance. And I would like to kindly ask you to adjust your display name with the following format, name and uh, institution or organization. Without further ado, let us hear about the GCS Red Plus uh, from the presentation of Dr. Pam Tutui, team leader of climate change, energy, and low carbon development from c 4 Aircraft. Dr. Tui, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sandy. Um, good afternoon, dear distinguished guests, um, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me wel heartily welcome you all to our workshop. We highly appreciate your time and participation, and having you all here in this workshop is indeed our great privilege. Um, C4 has more than 20 years of presence in Indonesia, and our organization is committed to supporting the government of Indonesia and strengthening collaborative research with Indonesian organization and partner to help sustain Indonesia forests and improve well-beings of local community and indigenous people. Indonesia has always been our great home, and although C4 mandate is global, Indonesia has always been our priority. And in this important event, let me just start by saying and also expressing our sincere thanks to government of Indonesia, many government agencies, as well as international and national partners who are working in Indonesia for your kind support for our C4 and ICRA research work in the last two decades. As you might already know, we are now in a critical time. At COP26, many countries, including Indonesia, have put forward a strong commitment to protecting standing forests, enhancing biodiversity conservation, and protecting rights of local communities and indigenous people to avoid catastrophic climate change. Society and us all need to both end is dependent on fossil fuel and pursue low emission development through forest conservation, agroforestry, sustainable land management, and restoration of ecosystem. So nature-based solution could provide up to 37% um, of the cost effective emission mitigation needed by 2030 to meet the goals of keeping global warming below 1.5 to 2 degrees. 
for the last decades, um, the governance of Indonesia has achieved many impressive results on emission reduction. The country has also made a strong commitment and dedicated planning toward climate change adaptation and mitigation, as well as achieving sustainable development goal in the next two decades. Our event today, as well as many C4 ongoing and future projects, are designed to support the countries and Indonesia stakeholders to achieve the transformational change. Our event today will discuss about the pathway moving from COP26 to G22 20 next year and how research can support aligning forest finance and development planning in Indonesia. As Seti has said, with this a forum for all of the stakeholders to discuss and reflect on the national priority and strategy toward NDC and transforming forestries and other land use sector into a carbon nesting by 2030. And also to discuss about the opportunity and challenges for Indonesia to implementing the country national target and commitment on reduced emission, deforestation and degradation. Um, as a leading countries in the global climate change arena, we believe that Indonesia can offer great lessons learned for the global communities as well as other neighboring countries on how the country can successfully carry out its climate change and forestry policy. And our project activities is also designed to support the foster of knowledge exchange. Indonesian stakeholder as well as the global communities. We also hope that with this dialogue, we will have a better understanding on how research in general, as well as C4 research project, can align our research with the national need and provide useful information for the policy maker and practitioner who are developing and implementing climate change policies and projects in Indonesia. Through our work on reduce emission from deforestation and degradation, enhancing the science on forest and climate change, uh, developing different policy the option for forest landscape restoration and sustainable management of wetland and mangrove, bioenergy and ecosystem by adaptation. Our C4 climate change team hope that we can continue to work with the policy maker, government agency, practitioners and also local communities in Indonesia, as well as many other countries and analysis and tools needed to design and climate change policies and also forestry policies to achieve sustainable development goal. Um, our global comparative studies on Red Plus has been carried out since 2009 and one of many projects that try to toward that goal to support the national stakeholder in Indonesia. Key research prior from 2021 to 2023 is to address current knowledge gap, including how to strengthen transparent and accountable MRV system, how we can address drivers of deforestation and degradation, at the same time provide a pathway for um, sustainable economic growth. We also would like to carry out the research to understand how countries and projects can design and safeguard system and how different policy scenarios can help policies maker to carry out a group appropriate planning for different sector and across sector in the next few years. We also hope that with our research um, in the next two years and a half, we will be able to provide reliable and scientific information and regular impact assessment intervention in how successful they are in terms of achieving its environmental and social objective and to provide a lesson learned not just only for um, uh, Indonesian stakeholder group, but also global communities on what policies and project intervention work best, where and for whom, and how we can all increasing its effectiveness. Our project has a strong desire to make sure that our research activities are based on country need and, uh, and serving the interests of the national stakeholder. And for the reason the policy dialogue today is extremely important for us, because your insightful knowledge, advice, and contribution will definitely help our project to align better to the national need and also seeking a possibility for us to strengthening our collaboration to provide a collective action to support the government of Indonesia. I wish to express our special thanks to all of the experts and presenters for accepting our invitation to share their experience today. I would like to also express our special thanks to all of you who are spending time with us and 
all of the insightful knowledge that you're going to share with us during the workshop. I would also like to extend our special thank to Pak Soni Mubanun from the Research Center of Climate Change at the University of Indonesia, who is the key partner of our GC Red Plus. In this phase, we really appreciate for, for his kind of support as well as the University of Indonesia support and looking forward to our fruitful collaboration with the University of Indonesia, as well as many other national partners who we would love to work with in this project. We would like to also express our special thank to NORAD and also the Norwegian embassies in Indonesia, who has the key insightful comment and suggestion over the project development phase and we're looking forward to have more interaction with all of you in the next two years and a half. Let me conclude by saying that I hope this workshop will bring new insights uh, and useful knowledge to your work and also our work and we thank you for your contribution and we hope to learn from you all and hope that we can continue to collaborate not only this event but also after this event. I want to wish you a very fruitful discussion and wish you a good health. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tui, for covering the decades of GCS Red Plus research and outlining about what we'll do in the next uh, two and a half years. Selanjutnya, senang sekali kami uh, sudah... And for the next agenda, we are very happy. Uh, Mrs. Yuke is here with us. And Mrs. Yuke from the National Planning Deve National Development Planning Agency is going to to explain us about the government strategy to achieve the national targets and also the pathway from COP26 to G20 and how um, research can contribute formulation of the national targets and policy. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me well. Thank you. See for and ICRAF for inviting me to this event. And I am going to deliver a presentation about the government strategy to achieve the low carbon development targets. And one of the focus here is that the global commitment that Indonesia has adopted uh, nationally, be it the strategies that we have in the medium term national development plan of 2020 till 2024, and also our national action plan that we have uh, updated every year. So this is my presentation and for the organizing committee, please remind me if I only have a few more minutes. So this is Indonesia's visions uh, by 2045. This is the uh, long vision of Indonesia and how we can anticipate the national needs. And FOLU is forestry and other land use, as we know. The other land use here is the land use for development, for the human development, for human settlement, for agriculture activities. And this is the land use that we've projected until 2045. And from the economic side, we are also demanded to adjust our policy because we want to get out of the middle economy, middle economic trap by 2036. So this becomes uh, a big challenge for us and from the environmental side we know that there are some impacts that we have to expect and in 2020 until 2024 in the medium term development planning document we have indicators for emission reduction targets that's one of the environmental aspect. So we don't only focus on economic and social aspect, but we also consider the environmental aspect. So that's why we put the emission reduction target there. So in the national priority six, we have low carbon development targets 
the improvement of the quality of the environment and also the improvement of uh, disaster resilience. So the gas house emission will be reduced uh, gradually and it, it is our priority and it is our target as well. And if we take a look at this percentage, 36% of Indonesia's land are consisted of forest. And as we see the land coverage in Indonesia, most of the forests are not covered by forest. And we also have to allocate some budget and some development effort in our forests, not only in conservation forests, but also protective forests and production forests as well. And based on the economic aspect, we also give space for Indonesia to improve its economic and get a value from the economic sector, from the forestry sectors. And we also have to rehabilitate critical forest lands that we have because we want to hemp deforestation rate in Indonesia. Next slide. And these are the challenges that Indonesia has encountered so far for the gas house emission. Indonesia is one of the biggest of emitters in the world. And we also have to express our commitment to the global community. Indonesia is a developing country. That's why Indonesia requires a lot more development. But on the other hand, Indonesia also has commitment that the future development considers environmental aspect, especially the adverse impact that the development put on the environments. So that's why we also put the emission reduction targets in our uh, national strategies. And if we look at the business as usual development by exploiting without considering the impact on the environment, we will see the, the, the decrease in GDP and increasing of emission. So there are two adverse uh, impact in our economy and in our environment. So be, uh, to conclude, we can have more development and increase the economic sector while at the same time reduce the emission and as we all know you know this is the in indonesia's uh, deforestation rate actually we also have data on 2020 until now we know that the rate of deforestation has this decreased so we not only we have to increase our efforts in reducing the emission, but we also have to decrease the rate of deforestation. If we don't do anything, so it means a business as usual, the agriculture sector and also the human settlement sector will push the rate of deforestation to become higher. And this is the projection that we have, and we want to make sure that the land coverage or our forest land uh, decrease year by year. Next slide. And we would like to make sure that the agricultural lands in the forest can be maintained. And as we see, we have 65% of the, the forest lands that is used for agriculture. But we also have to see the production forest is a third of Indonesia's land, but it only contributes to a certain percent, even less than the agriculture sector. So we have to make sure how we want to rearrange our concept for land use in Indonesia, how we can manage uh, our land land in Indonesia in a more efficiently, uh, more eco-friendly, and more sustainable. So this is the 
modeling that we have as of now. Hopefully in the future, we can have a better synergy between development, uh, production, and also environment. This is the trend of uh, forest coverage. So in the national level, we cannot equalize all of the numbers between each region, but we will take a look uh, deeper into regional the regional numbers because we want to design and plan for plan on programs that can be adjusted to the regional needs. And this is the forest transition rate. As you can see, the red zone is the Java Islands. And we also can look at the percentage of forest lands in Papua, and we want to maintain that percentage in Papua. We require more development, but we're trying to balance it in, we're trying to balance it as to not uh, transition or not converting any more forest lands in Papua. And there are some mitigation uh, efforts. We have the transition to new and renew. energy and energy efficiency increase productivity and also a uh, first one is data the data the date and study so that we can have a fact-based and evidence-based of policy formulation. And for the formulation of policy, we also would like to take a look how we can improve our budgeting and planning mechanism. And and so the financing and the budgeting mechanism has to be more transparent. We have to inform it to all stake and share burdens to other partners. And we also have to be more transparent to all business actors and to all of the stakeholders in Indonesia in terms of the policy formulation so that we can together achieve the target. And according to today's topic, we require researchers in many areas, and these researchers can answer our problems, our challenges, and can respond to our needs. So we have to formulate science based, we have to formulate policy based on science in several areas like natural science, interdiscipline science, and socio-economical science. And for example, in managing the natural resources, there is a human factor there. So we also have to think about the research in human resources. So that's why interdiscipline science or interdiscipline uh, science research is going to be more important in the future. Sorry, so sorry, I lost my voice for a little bit. Excuse me. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> It's also important for us to take a look at other sectors. For example, when the land is going to be divided into agriculture, we have to focus more on intensification rather than extensification. And from the economic aspect, 
we also have to know that in the forest, it's been so long that the local community has utilized the forest lands for their place to live or to produce something. So we don't have to take a look at the policy, but we also have to, to take a look at the fact uh, in the field. So all of the sectors and the institutions have to work together in order to formulate better policy that is driven by fact and evidence. And we can have a national mechanism formulating national policy, but we also need to strengthen our implementing regulations regime um, from the provincial level to the local level. And lastly, the multi-parties uh, cooperation and uh, cross-sectoral coordination have to be strengthened and to be made more solid to preserve and conserve our nature. Next. And then we also so do with the system dynamics approach. And I think this scheme has to be adjusted a little bit due to the COVID-19 pandemic because COVID-19 pandemic has impacted a lot of areas in this scheme. So we need to come up with new approach and we also have to formulate new mechanism and adding more items in our national action plan to recover from crisis. And we also put this in our modeling. And on the other hand, on one side, we want to heal the nature, but on the other on their side, we also have COVID-19 pandemic recovery and also to achieve the targets on uh, decreasing rate of deforestation and achieving the low carbon development targets. And also to ensure that in the future, we can have a natural resources based development but it does not decrease, decrease the capacity of our nature to support our develop, to, to support our development. And next slide is few exercise of the net zero emission scenario through a low carbon development. So we have projections for 2045, 2050 and 2060. And there are some scenarios that we can explore. Of course, if we don't do anything, of course, uh, the uh, this is impossible for us to see the impact on the same year based on the development and also the emission. So if if we do or conduct the development this year, then the impact of emission will be resulted in a few years. So we need to have a clear projections of this. Next slide. And this is the intervention and key policies to achieve net zero emissions uh, towards low carbon initiative in Indonesia, including reforest. Reforestation is conducted for a safety and aside from the fiscal policy or incentive mechanism for two thirds of the emission reduction initiative will be conducted mostly on the energy sector by in by decreasing the in towards a more energy approach i think uh, some 
Initiative Hands of Women Initiative in Indonesia. So I think energy uh, takes up the most portion of uh, emission in here. Produ so the energy sector produces more emission uh, compared to other sectors. And this is the net zero emission scenario in the land use sectors. There are some, so this is the charts. And this is, these are the data or the percentage for the carbon reserve number based on its sources. And also the number of land needs for bioenergy uh, plants. There are some plants that are based on oil that can improve uh, our achievement to target but we also but we need to see what kind of other efforts that we can for this uh, land use sector and this is the conclusion it is projected that forestry and other land use will contribute almost 60 percent of the total target of emission reduction that indonesia will achieve this is there are a lot of low-hanging fruits in here but we also have to explore more options. There are other things that I'd like to put in conclusion here, how research can contribute in the national development, not only in the technical aspect, but perhaps research can explore other aspects as well across the sectors. So I think all of the sectors in Indonesia needs to harmonize its policies so that we can achieve the nationally determined um, target that we have. And collaboration, synergy, and cooperation needs to be strengthened so that cooperation with the government can be stronger and government of Indonesia can get supports from the researcher so that the government of Indonesia can make a research-based uh, policy. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ibu Yuka, for the very comprehensive presentation. One thing that I would like to highlight from the presentation is the importance of collaboration between a research center such as C4 with government entities such as Ministry of Forestry and Environment and other agencies to achieve government targets in FOLU sector. Next, we are going to listen for a presentation from from Prof. the principal scientist, and Abimo Dwi Satrio on the follow sector and also commitment from COP26. Thank you, Sandy. Um, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you, Bapak. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you all about what we are doing and what we know and also perhaps what we do not know in terms of uh, supporting the government to achieve the follow net thing uh, in 2030. So this has been a huge program from this uh, stage in 2030. And I would like to share with you what we know and uh, certainly about the wealth of data we already have. What I mean by we here is not only C4, but also partners and uh, uh, body of work uh, in wetland, especially, to provide this uh, information to support the government. So um, from the work that we've been doing in the past 10 years on mangrove, uh, called uh, coastal blue carbon 
um, we are very confident that we have the very uh, information to share to support uh, the inclusion of blue carbon in the national agenda. Um, what, what are these national agenda? I will, I will tell you later, uh, ranging from the large national agenda, um, strategic agenda for the long-term one, uh, RPJP even, uh, 2040 or even 2050, and, and also project-based activities related to uh, climate change mitigation, especially to RED, as this project is going to talk about GCS RED. So Mangrove has a very a strategic role. And if you look at this data, we, we have about more than 150 publication, uh, peer-reviewed uh, publication on articles um, informing us about the wealth of carbon in uh, mangrove ecosystem ranging from the very degraded one restored um, and also the, the um, intact one so we, we have that information uh, both in uh, the context of carbon stocks as well as the flux and the flux here is um, not only co2 but also other non-CO2 gases. So um, how can we use this information? Um, we've been discussing with the government how the possibility of using this information for the development of FRL. So Indonesia is submitting uh, the second FRL uh, early next year, and we've been communicating with the government. This is the potential you know, uh, improvement of the previous FRL. Well, to include blue carbon or mangrove in there. We have the guidelines how to do that, and we, we've been learning how to use this guideline as well. Um, when I mentioned about long-term or strategic plan, uh, Ibu Yuka is familiar with this document, and I'm glad to share with you that mangrove and low carbon development um, agenda uh, go side by side, hand in hand, and mangrove is there, and this is for 2040. And so it's, it's very encouraging to know that uh, coastal blue carbon is included in this long-term one. Again, um, if we are ready with uh, the use of this information, um, we, we can provide that to uh, improve the current reporting, current uh, project uh, reference level, etc. It is also very encouraging to learn that uh, coastal ecosystem, coastal zones is in the NDC, the updated NDC. Um, but it's, it's not unfortunate, but uh, sooner or later we can adopt and include uh, mangrove, uh, coastal blue carbon in the mitigation part of the NDC as well. So there are a lot of uh, opportunities to do that. So let's move to G20. What, what is it all about? So Indonesia is um, chairing or being the uh, president of the 2022 uh, G20. And it will be launched in, well, it has already been launched, but the, 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 the summit will take place in Bali. And President uh, Jokowi is very keen to invite uh, his guest in Bali. And what is this? This is mangrove. Sun Cheng Pet also, uh, the G20 for the uh, seriousness or the uh, um, uh, se um, yeah the seriousness of the government in uh, protecting and rehabilitating mangrove. It's been a national agenda now to rehabilitate um, around 600,000 hectares of mangrove across the country. So if, if Bali is going to be the launch pad, this will go to nine provinces uh, ranging from you know Papua, West Papua, East and North Kalimantan, West Kalimantan, uh, et cetera. So G20, and Bali can be the launching pad for mangrove rehabilitation this year. So very much. Thank you very much, Pak Daniel. 
uh, for highlighting the one of the most uh, pressing issues facing national agenda. Selanjutnya, uh, next I would like to invite Mr. Bimo Dwi Satrio to deliver the presentation. Bimo, floor is yours. Baik, uh, Sandi. Uh, Thank you, Sandi. Thank you, Bapak Daniel. I would like to follow up on the presentation of Professor Daniel. We have plenty of data, scientific data from C4 and also our partners. For the next 10 minutes, I will deliver on what C4 going to do for the phase four we have five work packages and I will explain the four main work packages. First, for the work package 1.1 on the archetype of tropical deforestation and degradation, in general, this work package would identify the archetype of tropical deforestation and also degradation and later on would provide information for diagnostic for a for another work package the definition of archetype here is the stylized context that describe the main drivers patterns and also processes that shape the social ecological system and we will also explore how the existing data enables different classification for this work package it will be uh, led by Professor Art Angelson, his or her students, and also Dr. Pam Tutui. For work package 1.2, the data generation to support the enhanced transparency framework and And also, you implement that. And I like to close the data gap and also methodological in a manner that is more accurate. And we would like to emphasize on the carbon. And we would like to support Indonesian government. emission factors by paying better attention to emission from forest degradation and also forest fire driven by palm oil plantation out base and modeling and for the out related to GHG emission and also improving it, especially in Southeast Asia. And there are also several presentations in a scientific workshop. And as scientists, we will also produce several publications, scientific publication. Some have been published and you can read that in this slide. And we also prepare blog posts on activities and also scientific publication that we produce. Next. For work package two, let by several of our scientists 
and the team. For example, Sandi Noviansa, Pamela Komalasari. And here we aim to map on what context the policy intervention can work. The objective is we want to see what kind of policy that works and how that works while also linking it to the global context next in work package 2.2 we are going to map and also assess red plus financing and also benefit sharing mechanism in here you can see the tentative definition on the red plus financing mechanism and also benefit sharing mechanism as for the activity we are going to build typology of red plus source of funding in indonesia and also update apologies to create a database on red plus financial model this in Indonesia and scientific publication also benefiting knowledge three that we will update the content next year next on the work package 3.1 which is bringing out the politics, understanding and enlarging the policy space. This work package will be managed and led by Dr. Tutui Mari and Maria Brojas and Dr. Moria Mulyono. Judging the dynamic on the national and international level, we aim to understand the challenges and also opportunities, the power dynamic that affect the changes that happens. And the analysis that we are going to do is going to relate uh, to the global political economy of deforestation and to understand the challenges and also opportunities related to power relations. We will also do the analysis on governance of global forest carbon finance and also the change in dynamic of the Red Plus management related to the discourse and policy context. And on the national context, we will also look at the job creation law, the updated NDC, and LTC, LCCR, carbon tax in the as stated in the regulation, and the potential for carbon trading uh, from forestry permit holders. And as stated by Mr. Daniel, we will also look at the mangrove as discussed in a policy discussion. As for the deliverables, we will have scientific papers in for three and also tools we will develop along with our partners and also carbon market. For work package 3.2 on safeguard and right-based approaches, the we will conduct analysis and also publication outlining practical steps 
to meet safeguard standards, to promote social inclusion in a policy that is forest friendly. On global level, we will also link it to national and subnational level. Um, number one is a review of voluntary safeguard standards and psychology of red plus safeguards. While on national and subnational level, we will review the laws associated with the safeguards and also research on the implementation of safeguards on national level and subnational level view in implementing safeguard and also challenges that they face while implementing them. Next. This is one of the example are quite small here, but there are two things um, here that I would like to highlight the safeguard uh, by the following. standard and also encourages by international institution. Next, the tending of dry context of the forest. Next, the and forest degradation and the con from supply info to do and other science policy platform. Lastly, is World Work Package 5 related to communication and engagement for this project to help in achieving the targets. Uh, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. And if you have any question, feel free to ask the question during the Q&A or panel discussion. Sandy, thank you Bimo, for the presentation that explains the work of uh, in the in the past 2.5 years next i would like to give the floor to dr sony mumbunan and after the presentation dr sony will lead the discussion session that discuss the topics we have listened to the presentations in detail floor is yours bapak sony Thank you for the opportunity to deliver this. Hope everyone is in good health. In the next 10 minutes, I will deliver a presentation on what we are going to do. But first, allow me to deliver background related to what we have heard from previous presenters uh, and NDC, the national strategy and others. As a background, this is our most important policy documents. And you can see that it is created on different timeline. And DC is um, until 2030, LCDI, 2045, 20, 20, we have also long-term strategy and net zero emission. Everyone who are familiar with this policy documents understand that these policies affect one another. And we can see that the newest 
um, policy document built based on the insights from previous policy documents. And in here, we can see several examples of intervention on two things. Number one, follow and agriculture. And if we look at this table, we have NDC, LCDI, LTS, and NZT, NZZE. For example, deforestation, we can see here from the beginning with emphasizing on, with the emphasis on primary forest. And we also see carbon sequestration in all these documents. And sustainable forest management as well. And we can see several new areas as well. For example, water management. And once again, we still need to improve this. And we need to also look at the metrics. Next slide, please. For the agriculture sector, we can see some issues here, for example, on food loss and waste. We can see that in LTS, but not in the previous documents, and also in net zero emission. And we will see the examples of interventions and we can have discussions with the participants on what we can implement um, next to provide you with another context. As Ibu Yuka stated and Mr. Daniel stated, there are several exercises that define NDC, LCDI, LTS, and other newer variants in net zero emissions and some from Bapenas or Ministry of Forestry and Environment. However, it is on the context of two, two pollutions. And I think the one that is related most to um, policy here is best case and also several scenarios of LCDI, high scenario and LCDI plus. The terms here, the usage of terms also try to align with NDC targets on the plan to reduce the percentage of emission and we have LCDI plus as well that looks to be more ambitious for example facing out of coal and others but we have the best case and try to imagine for example if there are other different scenarios for example the emissions the emission keep on increasing and also the emission decrease. Let's look at other exercise that is also very relevant. And this is included in long-term strategy on low carbon and climate resilience. The semantics is quite different, but I think the idea is still similar. We have transition scenario and also LCCP, low carbon scenario, that is compatible with our commitment for Paris Agreement target. And, and due to time limitation, let's focus on the most ambitious plan, the LCCP, that is expected to peak at 2030. Follow and agriculture play a very important role and and we look at the green graph here. 
most uh, that is the thing that has been discussed a lot lately. So are the exercises already reflected in our policy? And these scenarios are the outcome of exercises looking at the number of uh, some number of interventions. And with the time we have right now, we would like to involve all the participants and we want to hear your input on the policies that I have briefly elaborated next. For us to be to, to allow the session to be more interactive, there are uh, four things that we would like to discuss further. Number one, we will try to prioritize policy exercises. It is important, but due to time limitation and also resources, but if needed, we can have more exercise on this uh, topic and after that we are going to give participants the opportunity to provide brief comment please make it concise to ensure that all participants can provide comment uh, next we're going to do response and deliberation and also lastly prioritize prioritization on the policy exercise. We are doing this approach as well when we were compiling the LCDI. The approach quite similar with what we are doing today. And in order to do this exercise, BIMO, I think we can start the survey. There are two questions for this survey. Can you please show the survey? Uh, ya, yeah, jadi kita punya beberapa yang kita rangkumkan dari yang tadi. We, we have for you please name five intervention that needs to be the priority. The policies are already included in NDC, LCDI. LTS and also net zero emission. Please choose five intervention that should be the priority. Please only use five for follow sector. I think all the participants can just click on the screen, right? Yes. Yes, um, participants, you can just click the options on your screen. Yes, I think we need to give time to for the participants to read and also choose the options. Sorry, ini kok saya nggak bisa submit ya? I cannot submit the, the answers from my part. Bapak Sandi, I cannot submit my answer. We'll assist you, Ibu. Mungkin aksesnya perlu dibuka untuk semua ya, kelihatannya. Perhaps the organizing committee can make this uh, poll accessible to others. melihat aksesnya sudah open jadi semua peserta sudah bisa uh, menjawab bisa berpartisipasi silakan jika masih ada ladies and gentlemen do let us know if you still cannot submit your answer ladies and gentlemen once again i would like to inform everyone to only choose five policies five policies I think all participants have answered this question. Okay, then we can discuss the next question. 
the first question the question was on uh, is on follow and next we're going to see the next question a moment please Ladies and gentlemen, you can see the question on your screen. According to you, please choose five intervention that should be the priority. Ladies and gentlemen, kind reminder that you can only choose five policies or five interventions. How many respondents do we have so so far? If we have enough respondents, then we can continue. Yes, we currently have 26 respondents, so I think we can continue. Thank you so much for responding this polling. And now we're going to move on to the part where the participants can express your opinions about the intervention that you've chosen and also please provide necessary arguments why you choose that area due to the limited time perhaps we can give each of the participants one minute uh, to explain so perhaps all of the 20 participants can have uh, 20 minutes of this plenary session and then we can move on to the next agenda. So who's going to start first? Please use the raise hand feature or we also would like to ask anyone if you want to volunteer to press one to unmute your microphone. Sandy, can you please uh, display the last slide so that it can remind the participants about the context of our discussion? Yes, so perhaps uh, this can help you to uh, refresh your mind or to make it more specific. So. Imagine if a researcher wants to compare what Indonesia is doing compared to others, other countries. So what kind of uh, policy intervention that has to be prioritized? You have to think about the comparability, but you also have to consider the specific uh, relevant issue in Indonesia. Perhaps you might find some similarities in other countries, but I'm sure that Indonesia have some specific issues that does not exist in other countries. And from the area that you've chosen, please provide the arguments on why you chose that area. And perhaps we can consider the rationale behind uh, your choice. Sandy, perhaps do you want to lead the discussion at that? Okay. Uh, any other any participants who want to express something? Yes. Yeah. My name is Elim from APP, uh, Mr. Sony. I think. If we talk about FOLU, we, I also attended uh, COP26 and the Agriculture Forest Land also implement the sustainable land management. And this is part of the low carbon development initiative in this area. The distinctive feature that I see in Brazil is that when we talk about sustainable uh, forest management, the management in the it 
in the in the in the conservation and management and carbon sequestration can con contribute uh, to achieve the to achieve the net follow the net things follow and what we have to look further is that what is the ratio between uh, the two in Indonesia, 10% becomes the mandatory figures, but forest manage in every FMU, I think it can be more than 10%. And every in every standards, you say that the industrial land forest can reach uh, up to zero or net, but we have to look at the protocols that other countries put in place, like the Brazilian com companies or Chile uh, in, 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 in the forest that they're managing, but we have the value of 10% that becomes mandatory. So I think we can also claim the contribution of the NDC achievement you have FMU and you also have the figures of mandatory 10%. For palm oil, the cycle is longer, which is 25 years and right. And this, this is similar to the carbon cycle. So when the so can we claim better uh, carbon absorption by looking at the plantation cycle as well? So everyone considers that it's balanced what you cultivate, that's what you cut. But the palm oil plants, we only har harvest the fruits. So I'm not sure about the carbon research. I think what you say, I think your main point is that to differentiate and um, sustainable forest land management in the plantation land in the middle of the forest. Yeah, any other comments? Thank you so much. My name is Dia from the Ministry of Forestry and Environment. One of the issue that I would like to highlight here is the sustainable forest management. In the ministry, we have developed a lot of projects of reforestation up to 12 to 7 hectares of forest lands. And this is one of the opportunity and at the same time challenge to mitigation efforts of climate change. And this activity can achieve a sustainable forage, forest management and and in real life, the local community has preserved the surrounding forest in their areas. But on the other hand, of course, the local community is also seen as threat because they utilize the forest land and they sometimes convert the land, the forest lands. So I think uh, it's two sides of a coin. So my recommendation is that we need uh, more research about uh, the performance of sustainable forest management. And also we have to measure the success of the current sustainable forest management effort that we have. And we also have to evaluate the mechanism that we have. Do we need to uh, improve the governance or implementation? And this is the program that can involve the local community. We can invite 
the community to participate in this sustainable forest management because they are the closest uh, living mechanism in the forest lands not only because they live in the surrounding forest lands but they also they are also vulnerable if the governance or in implementation of sustainable forest management is suboptimal. They will suffer from the adverse impact of bad uh, sustainable forest management. I think that's my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Dia, uh, for your recommendation. So uh, you are talking about the social forestry project that is related to the sustainable forest management. You uh, highlighted interactions with the local community and how we can utilize their contribution in this project. So there is an information uh, from Crystal Hargula about the rotation of palm plantation and other tree plantations. And we are still waiting for the response from other participants. So please provide the arguments on why you chose the area in the polling session earlier. You can certainly uh, use Bahasa Indonesia or English because we have uh, interpretation service provided in this meeting. Uh, so sorry, I'm running out of battery. Uh, I'm so sorry, I'm running out of the battery. So I'm I switched the device. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. And I heard the response from the ladies earlier about the palm oil and the lady from the Ministry of Forestry and Environment expressed something about sustainable forest management. But I think the most important thing here to underline here is the terms of FOLU, forest and other land use, deliberately does not include agriculture. So in IPCC, we no a folu. Now we are talking about folu because a folu is agriculture, uh, forests, and other land use. And if you talk about plant, uh, if you talk about palm oil plantation, then it is included in the agriculture sector. So I don't think that it's included in the folu. If I'm not mistaken, this is about. If I'm not mistaken, the lady from the Ministry of Forestry has said something about sustainable forest management. So if I understand correctly, it's about the forest that is managed by the local community. So I think the project of RAT Plus on the national level does not, does not recognize uh, activities on subnational or jurisdictional activities. So I think well, this is more about static land use. So it, it is not specified. It, it's not specified of other land use. For example, so for example, uh, social forestry. So I think perhaps in the future, if folio wants to be made not sink as I presented before by 2030, the nitty gritty details have to be accounted for as well. Thank you, Mr. Sony. Thank you, uh, Professor Daniel, uh, for your additional remarks. And it is quite relevant uh, to what Ms. Dia and Ms. Ellen has, uh, have said earlier. There are aspects of jurisdictions and aspects of, of nitty gritty uh, details of activity that can be sharpened in order to have a more accurate uh, accounting. So what we're doing right now with uh, emission, LTS, and LCDI. Even though that I have known several exercises that has accounted this for, per regions and per islands, but for this activity in a wide scale, I think it is 
easier to be counted while um, professor daniel has mentioned distinctive modelings that states that all of in all interventions are not equal and the definitions process of all modeling are not equal as well or are not the same uh, between projects so uh, perhaps we can have the matrix that can show the distinctive features but the point that i can uh, highlight here is that this exercise is required uh, for the future this detailed exercise is required in the future especially to formulate the policy document after this uh, dialogue after this policy dialogue for example um, and consider COVID-19 pandemic to be included in the scheme and the jurisdictional aspect highlighted by Professor Daniel can also be included in the uh, exercise scheme. Okay, any other contribution from the participants? From the participants? What do we need to consider on formulating the policy intervention, especially in FOLU and agriculture? Uh, several participants has also reminded us about agriculture and FOLU because agriculture is not included in forest and other land use sectors. Uh, any other comments from other participants? Crystal. Saya melihat Crystal mengacungkan tangan. Crystal. Oh, I think you've raised your hand. You're more than welcome to turn on your mic. You're still yes. muted, Crystal. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Can you? Please. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, my question is about the formulation about substituting syn synthetic fertilizer with uh, organic fertilizers. Um, since there are several studies um, demonstrating that you cannot locally uh, produce uh, to substitute synthetic fertilizer, so you have to import it, and basically the, the balance becomes negative. So uh, you cannot, I mean, if you want to be uh, to reduce effectively greenhouse gases emissions, it, the idea is not to fully substitute, but perhaps going to half substituting or uh, substituting like three quarters. And so I was wondering whether there were some, um, you know, uh, scenario, scenarios or calculations that have been made on that for, uh, in the case of Indonesia, or de depending on the region of Indonesia, because I guess this is very, uh, that needs to be applied. Thank you. Thank you. Terima kasih, Bu uh, Crystal. Jadi, uh, tadi Thank you, Crystal. You mentioned your question is about the substitution of synthetic fertilizer. We cannot answer that right now, but I think in the LTS document, there are some points that mentioned about your uh, question. Is it like half or two thirds or three quarters of the substitution? There are some uh, parts that mentions your question, but we understand the importance of your idea because Substitution here is very key, but your opinion is that it doesn't have to be full substitution. It can be one third or three quarters. And we also have to look at the portion of the substitution and also to measure the impact of that uh, substitution. Sandy? Do you want to say something? Yeah, I'd like to invite more uh, comments from the participants.
mungkin ada institusi lain yang saya lihat di sini ada rekan dari BRI. Um, other colleagues perhaps can comment. We also have participants from WRI, WRI, and Mr. Wayan, and the Coordinating Ministry of Economic Affairs. And we also have Tariono from RMU. Um, selamat siang. Good afternoon, uh, Sony, and also Sandy. My name is Arif from WRI. Thank you for the opportunity. I think the discussion is very interesting so far. I am joining here alone without the presence of my colleagues, but let me just try to provide session related to the efforts to better forest land management and improved efforts in the forest land degradation i think it's it's a challenge uh, for all of us how we look at the government commitment the government commitments are still contradictive as being stated by uh, President Jokowi in COP26, but on the next day, there, there, there was another uh, statement uh, from the Minister of Forestry Environment. So there are some contradicting policies and commitments between uh, the government institutions. But I think the most important point here is that forest is still uh, key supporting factors in Indonesia's economic. Mr. Sony, you said something about LTS document, and one of uh, the key topic highlighted in the LTS document is achieving net sinks. And whatever the term is, in 20, 2030 or 2031 as it as being stated in LTS document it is a good thing that can achieve the net zero emission or net zero deforestation net zero deforestation in Indonesia if we take a look at LTS document the planning document is here the policy was being developed by the national planning agency and the medium-term national development planning has already included that uh, in their document. And what we and as we all know, the global climate crisis is being put aside in the midst of pandemic. But and uh, a significant amount of Indonesia's budget has been reallocated to conduct economic recovery and to support uh, small and medium enterprises in the midst of pandemic. And I think uh, slowing down the, the deforestation rate and uh, to improve the forest land management, uh, peatland, and also mangrove, it has to wait, so to speak. But we also have to know that we have other partners, other financing partners that can strengthen their commitments to achieve to help achieve the government uh, commitments or government targets. And as, be, as being done in GCS project, I am very keen to read all of the Red Plus book of the, C, uh, of the C4. I was part of it for a number of years, in fact. The narratives that was the narratives that was developed there was already very good, was already very good, but we need to strengthen the implementation of those narratives. So it becomes uh, our challenge in the future. If the GCS is arriving at the fourth cycle, I would like to see this program to provide a more trans transformative scales uh, examples that can be scaled up. And at one point that can be uh, good examples 
or success stories from government Indonesia in terms of um, FOLU or forest and other land use uh, management. Thank you so much for your comment. There are some important points that I wrote here. Perhaps our action have to be more concrete in the landscape level and BIMO also said something about there is an effort from the GCS to approach the policy making side. So we are putting more pressures on the science. Uh, so improving wealth of knowledge and of the decision making will be driven by the science findings. So I, I think, especially when we try to bridge the science and a policy formulation, I think policy formulation nowadays has started to integrate results of scientific research. But I, I would like to see more improvement in the future. Sandy, do we still have time? Yes, we do. Nia, you are raising your hand. I am a researcher from C4 and also part of GCS Red for quite some time now. I would like to comment on what Arif stated before on what are the follow-ups after the research? What are the next steps after the research? On phase four, this is something that we are trying to do. We try to bridge between science and policy. And perhaps Arif already familiar with this, Previously, there was no emphasis on science policy dialogue or efforts to the consultation. And in this phase, we are emphasizing science policy dialogue, and this would allow our research to give more impact to the policy. And also for other studies that we have conducted, we slowly try to understand what are needed back then we conducted the same approach. All countries using a set of a same research approach to allow us to see the trends in various countries. But however, right now, however, right now, we are trying to pay better attention to what each country he needs. That is all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Nia. This is also response to Arif's comment. Let me see. Is there anyone else who would like to give response? I saw Bapak Joko raise hand. Bapak Joko from BKF. I would like to respond to what Nia stated before. Allow me to share my screen. When we are talking about policy, we are currently preparing the carbon economic value. And when we are talking about the carbon pricing or carbon tax, 
we are going to do carbon trading and carbon tax and the two programs would go hand in hand and the context here is that we are going to implement polluters principle and when we are implementing this principle in indonesia government has a clear roadmap when we are talking about the carbon price instrument we're going to talk about two things number one is related to trade we are going to look at the ETS and also crediting mechanism. And we're going to talk about carbon tax and also result-based payment for the non-trade instrument. Red Plus usually work on the result-based payment area. And so far we have three big projects on this in East Kalimantan, in Jambi, and also the Green Climate Fund. What's interesting here is that carbon tax. Carbon tax will be 2022, and first we will implement it to coal sector, and in 2025, other sectors in NDC, including land base. So also be included in the carbon tax scheme. However, before we start the carbon tax, we allow them to do trading or carbon offset would be the driver for the carbon tax. Aside from the improvement from corporations and also business people through carbon trading and carbon offset. This can also be a, an item that reduce the carbon tax later on. When we talk about the readiness in 2025, we will have the carbon scheme, carbon tax scheme and when we are talking about the plan to do 2022, the plan is to implement the carbon tax in for coal sector. And 2020, the tax to other sectors. Therefore, what we can see here is that the science and also previous researches are very much needed when we see the mandate from the presidential instruction on the carbon pricing and also harmonizations of tax scheme, we are currently in the process of preparing this. And aside from carbon trading and carbon tax, we will also look at how we do the capping because carbon tax we will also um, have another tax based on this cap on top of the um, cap and therefore it is an urgent discussion for us especially when we are discussing several issues related to the sectoral readiness and also the determination of capping for each sector. That would be all from me, Bapak Sony, thank you. Thank you. Uh, input and also update related to carbon pricing that also include tax and carbon trade and result-based payment. We have heard about the update from the Ministry of Finance, and I think this is a good thing because from NDC, it and ZE, we, there, 
were mentions about carbon tax, but there has been no further exercise related to carbon pricing. And therefore, the input, your input, Bapak, is very important. And we, the update of that you have given us is actually a good point to make. Nia, um, do you want to say anything? No, sorry. Um, yes, anyone else? We also have to admit that due to limited time, we have not discussed on the relation to the financing. We are still talking about finance, we are still talking about the pathway, um, but maybe we should have another session to discuss about the financing. Uh, Sandy, do we still have time because we need to pay attention to the time? I think we can open the floor for one more comment, input or question from participant. Perhaps from Bapanas, any response from Ibu Yuke or um, Ibu Yuke's team? Related to financing, I um, see that oh, we have Tiza here. I have no questions so far. Thank you so much for the presentations. Thank you. Bapenas has also mentioned in a chat box that there is no response so far. Um, while waiting, perhaps we can also discuss about other things. Like Arif stated, we have done a lot related to, for example, medium term development plan or regulations related to carbon pricing. and how we managed to build the plan to do. I think it is also important to do multi-sector integration conducted by Bapanas and also what Bapak Joko has stated before on the finance uh, sector. on how the medium term development plan would be translated to the fiscal and macro policies on annual basis. But due to COVID, do it later on. Uh, Tiza, floor is yours. When we are talking about bridging and also carbonizing policy, one thing that it is important that is important to do is to emphasis on Indonesia's carbon allowance. And that is per sector, right? For energy in this far as I know on the cap and trade and cap and tax policy discussions in the context of carbon pricing, 
I think what is crucial is to look at the cap. If we do not set the cap and if, if we don't set ambitious target for a cap, then we perhaps not going to have a lot of impact and then we civil society organization have to also scrutinize this process that would be all for me thank you thank you Tisa. before we're talking about other things it is important for us to also discuss about cap because without it it, it becomes the basic uh, the the basis for a lot of things and the challenge is that how the planning we can um, decide on the cap per sector and and to also discuss about landscape and, and this is a challenge we'll have to face in the future as the follow-up for carbon pricing bapak joko has discussed a bit about this but i think we can discuss more about this on the roadmap but I think we need to be patient because this is a quite fast paced phase. And what is uh, stated before is something that we really do need to pay attention to. Dian, you raised your hand. Yes, Thank you. Good afternoon, Bapak Sony and Sandy. My name is Dian. I would like to give a comment. From private sector, we highly appreciate this initiative on how you involve private sector since the beginning, especially the industries that would in which is the land-based industry and we have a lot of commitments as well related to net zero emotion to be involved in session and also for other research or other activities we will be very happy to be in of and contribute to quick question to be in of you to question is anyone is is there any participant from ministry of we have we do have this involved private sector and we need to tackle this together we need to involve private sector um bapak joko you raise your hand again uh, but before that sandy do we still we have do we still have time yes we do Jesus statement cap is a crucial issue when we talk about the carbon tax um, roadmap and carbon trade roadmap the cap is an important discussion this cap can be a form of interface carbon market government can do invention the problem here is that we also need support 
when we are talking about evidence-based or research-based policy, when we determine the sector capping, we need to make sure that the cap is Or not too low. When we are talking about the full, the polluter pay principle, the most basic principle here is that it has to be a built-in mechanism because when we look at the mar if the market condition is not conducive. we have to carefully think about this. This is a time when we are learning by doing. For example, if there is a question, why do we start with coal sector? It's because we have done the pilot thing and also internal transition. And the scheme is still applied in a limited manner, still applied to PLN only. But I think for piloting, this has fulfilled all instruments and also infrastructures. If we want to see this as the early initiator of voluntary carbon trading, because we have seen the carbon offset and also capping mechanism in here. So capping is determined based on the emission in 2019. And we have cap threat and also offset mechanism. And these are the examples on evidence of and this is an example of tangible benefit of research-based policy. And we put it in regulation. We want the, we, we ask the energy ministry regulation to ensure that this scheme can be implemented because if we stay on the piloting level only, and then you can see it in the draft of presidential instruction, we cannot implement carbon tax and carbon trade if we don't have the ministerial regulation. And we have conducted the preliminary and we see that this can also be replicated in other sectors. We have Professor Daniel here. Maybe we can try to replicate this in follow. And if we can do that, that would be amazing. Even though we understand that voluntary carbon mechanism practice in Indonesia is already ongoing. For example, our colleague in Warsi. And, and we have to discuss about how to balance domestic and international market. That would be all. Sandy and Sony from me, thank you. Thank you, Bapak Joko. That is a good response. Maybe we can try to replicate it in land-based sector. And we will try to also do exercise like what Bapak Joko stated uh, related to PLN. Um, apologies, um, do we still have time? 
Sekarang mungkin yeah. sudah. I think we have come to the end. Saya ada sesi lain. Baik, kita sampai jam berapa? Kita akan segera selesai. Profesor Daniel, we're going to conclude this session. Sorry, I cannot really hear you. We conducted a survey to see which intervention that should be prioritized. We can see the answers, the answers from um, our participants. I cannot see that I'm using um, cell phone. Yes, I think it is best for us to see the outcome of the previous survey. And I think all the participants can see this. Yes, I think so, Bapak. Bisa dilihat, jadi ada beberapa yang... Kanan, ya. Pak. Jadi yang yang dirasa paling kanan, penting uh, itu adalah... What is important here, um, what is the most important is deforestation in primary forest. And reforestation and rehabilitation of degraded land. Uh, we have, yang, uh, have examples of several intervention here. Maybe we can also show the the result sector. Okay, crop productivity and intensity. Crop productivity uh, is the highest. And we can crop variety, okay. Water efficient cultivation system. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation in our survey. And we will try to model that. But, and we have also received uh, a lot of input on uh, we have Miss Nia on that thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for your participation may we all stay healthy thank you Bapak Sony uh, thank you ladies and gentlemen I will give uh, the floor to Prof. Daniel to conclude this meeting. Right in time. I just arrived in my house. Kita yeah. Yes. Kita Sir, we can hear Kemarin. you. Dan, ya, dapat koneksi yang bagus. Baik, uh, terima kasih, Thank teman -teman. you, ladies and gentlemen. I still cannot turn my camera on. Sangat produktif sekali apa yang kita bicarakan. It has been very productive session that we have here. I think we, Professor Daniel, lost connection. Prof. Daniel. Halo. Ya, silakan Pak. Kembali yeah. muncul lagi. Yeah. Hari ini GCS Red, saya kira mendapat amunisi untuk bergerak maju ke depan. We have received plenty of input on how we're going to move forward. I noted mainly two things. Number one, on how we are given the opportunity to see red and not just on Article 5. Based on our discussion, we can see the possibility on how RED can also discuss other article, for example, 62 and C4, for example, and the partners are open for this possibility as body of research or body of work. For example, if we have a deadlock on voluntary market, it is possible when we have implemented carbon pricing and also carbon tax next year, it is also possible 
that follow sector can also see other perspective if the cap is low then there is extra credit that can be sold so the market can also tap into the voluntary and non-voluntary this forum aims to complement gcs um, red in the future next on the implementation on subnational level we have learned and we need to look at how this can be implemented on subnational level not jurisdictional approach subnational level ibu dia has a discuss about social forestry and others and if we look at other sectors for example sec um, energy but we have heard input from bapak joko GCS Red see the land-based sector with a particle boundary, and I think it poses a risk, but it is possible that with the participation and also different infrastructure that we can have a social fencing to ensure that we can avoid leakage or prevent leakage. Once again, I see that this is a very productive forum. We are not just talking about carbon, but we are also talking about science, political science, governance, and others. Thank you once again. Thank you for your kind participation and contribution. Thank you, Bapak. Thank you, Bapak Daniel, and all our speakers for your participation in science and policy dialogue. But before we end this meeting, please kindly turn your camera on so we can take picture. Bagian bisa. One, two. Three. Apologies uh, that uh, the session is overrun. Please kindly fill in the event survey. You can click the link in the chat box, and we are also going to send the link to your email. This discussion. the faith dialogue I, first of all i would like to say thank you and see you again in the next uh, science and policy dialogue good afternoon wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi